of got messed up. I apologize, but this is match one, game one, so um, didn't miss much. But I do, I do apologize. I wonder if they'll have the crackly friend. They did not. I wonder what they took the long pause about. So next turn we have a fine and dandy little attack. They would need something convoluted to win from here, I think. That is not too convoluted. Hmm. So if I play this and they have a spell, they get a blocker, um, they block block maybe, or maybe they just block this and then block one of those, in that case they'd be taking 6 plus 5 plus 13 down to 1 and then maybe be able to win the game. Um, so I could just conclave here and then attack, they block one for 5, take 9 down to 5, or we could cast the heroic. Tap the two from the heroic. Plus our other land, plus this. It's probably just better to do this. They don't have a spell. This is a mistake. I think it's safer overall. Because they're, they're going to have a spell and be able to block two. I think my math was right. I think they just like block here, block there, and then they take six plus five plus two. And then next turn, if they have a bunch of spells, we could just lose. This way, they uh, have to block something, and they still go down to five, and then we have the heroic reinforcements. If we draw anything that's uh, two mana or less, we can give it haste as well. A blinkety eye and a few spells could be a problem. It does not look like a blink of the eye and a few spells. They have a mystic in the main. That probably means they have two or three mystics total, and that could be a problem. One of the better cards versus us. I would love to know if they have a Goblin Electromancer in their deck. So that we know if we need Baffling End or not. I think at this point it's almost universal that they all just do. Oh, he did have a Blink of the Eye doesn't do anything in this particular situation because we have friends to come to the party. Uh, 
Must have got that blink late. Because if he'd blinked first and then torment, torment, he'd have got us. So I think these cards are reasonable. I actually think this is reasonable. It's like just really, really hard for them to block. And I think they're going to be saying, eh, it's probably not that reasonable, actually, if they're playing that many Mystics. So I think these are the cards I can consider. I don't actually think Adanto's good, so I think that's pretty easy to take out. I don't know about anything else, though. So I'm pretty happy with the rest of the cards. I wonder if there's a sideboard card for this version anywhere. Sideboard guy, yeah, I don't know why I said card. Maybe Snubhorn's just not good here. It's a 3 3, though. Hunted's probably not great. I just don't care about this. It's kind of like a lot of mana. They could have spell pierce or something. Yeah, this hand's pretty good. We have a turn one friend. We have a red source. And we have a way to get rid of an electro friend. Um, since he led with the red mana, I'm pretty sure I'm just going to cast a weaker hunted. It's the one that probably guarantees and does the damage. I already got a phoenix in a grave. That's pretty good. So good chance we'll need to draw a land to use the venerated. Can't imagine that they're not killing something here. Just hoping that they're not killing at all. Fiery's not real popular anymore though, so. Bye friend, you'll be missed. As I said, we probably need to draw a land. Oh god, we're strong the deck. We needed a land so bad. That's unfortunate. Please, sir, may I have a land? attacking. It's kind of scary. No land for us. It's not really fair. I just want to play my spells. Is that so hard? At least we're going to play game three. Yeah. Land this turn? <clears throat> this game is still winnable, but it's like, obviously like really tight now, and it's going to depend on what's in their hand. It'll depend on if we draw a land next turn or not. Like, that's 
pretty vital now. See what they've got. Kind of interesting. Can I telegraph this? Might have been better just to put the hierarch in play, but I don't think they have a shock. I think a shock would have already been played by then. Well, they did have a shock. They just let me get a 4 4 in play for some reason. And took 2 damage for some reason in a game that looks like it's clearly going to be a race. Uh, not a lava coil. Oh, we had a good chance there. I don't think we have a good chance anymore. We probably still have a decent chance. So we're going down to 10. Really need them to brick next turn. That's not bricking. Oh, that's one of the best possible. It's two spells or more. I don't know what we can draw now. Another heroic reinforcements, maybe. I'm too lazy to do the math. Nah, no heroic reinforcements isn't enough. That's not enough either. Oh well. Alright, so we're back on the play now. Maybe I want a few more one drops on the play. I just don't know what I take out. I'm pretty sure I want all these baffling ends. Maybe I can cut one. Cause like maybe I never really want to draw more than one. Maybe I kind of went down to two. Uh, this sounds good. We have our best card, and we have a good two drop. And we have lands and a removal spell. We're just going to have to see how much removal they have. Because if they have a shock for this, things will get bad quick. Looks like they have a shock. 
Just shake my head in sadness. All right, come on, history of Benalia. One time, baby. Not a history of Benalia. Well, I'm pretty sure we just lose now. You can't cast two creatures with White Weenie in three turns and expect to win. planet want the creatures for next turn so we can like maybe conclave I didn't want to just play this and give this plus one that didn't seem like we're getting anywhere It drew more shocks than we did one drops. Still put up a fight though. We're not dead yet. It could be dead now. Probably not, though. I feel like there's still magic to play this game. Another reinforcement always gives us a chance. That's a good one. That attack seems horrendous, doesn't it? I guess that means I have a shock. I don't care about my life total, so why would I ever block? I don't care about my life at all. Why would I ever block there? And we expected you to have a shock. Because why would you not have 3 and 15 cards? I'm a lot more nervous about this game than I feel like I should be. Of course. I can, Melodies and Mystics are literally the only cards left in his deck that are good in this spot. The fact that he's drawn three of them is pretty darn good.
and that's pretty good too. I sort of to have a radical idea they're going to be able to do something now. So they hit four shocks under top 20 cards. And now I'll probably lose unless I hit another removal spell or another heroic. That was ridiculous. And they didn't have to use the radical idea. And they're racing now. How are you racing now? I think you should have left it back in double blocked. You keep making plays that make me think that if I draw heroic, I'll just win. Uh, it's almost impossible for it not to come back. I guess it's actually... They played... Uh, Four shocks and one opt is actually pretty hard for it to come back, right? Uh, they hit one of their only other good cards. Like I said, Mystics and Melodies are the only good cards left in their deck. Now they've hit four in their top 22 cards and, and five removal spells. How ridiculous is that? And now we're just dead. We have no out now. We have to draw another tribunal. Uh, this isn't going to do it. It's not going to be enough. They have three blockers no matter what. They can just put two in front of it, and it's going to be nearly impossible for this not to kill me on the following turn. I guess like a brick. The brick on two spells will win. The odds of bricking on two spells seem pretty unlikely. I'm going to go to one. We have four attackers, so as long as they don't hit two spells this turn, we will win, I think. But the odds of them hitting spells are just so high. And that was two spells. They hit exactly two spells. I'm a little annoyed to lose this game. I think our opponent made some very bad decisions and got incredibly lucky. And it's tilting.
That match is really hard to lose from this side, too. Lost another dash row. Exactly what you want to do when you play this deck. Eh, it's not good, but it's a keep. Cool. Where was that game to? So why we need to get destroyed by any black removal deck? Because like Ritual Suit and Golden Demise and stuff like that is just too strong. Like we have very little chance versus this type of match. Right on time, seventh land. At least we got to flip a Danto. Hmm. I guess they're going to lose. They didn't draw a sweeper. They have to be annoyed. I wonder if I'm ever supposed to tap one of these just so I can play around the sweeper a little bit. Probably not. Because if I'd played around it, they'd have got to surveil twice. Huh. We're certainly not supposed to win that game, I don't think. I think I'm going to take out the snow horns because I just 
don't expect them to be too relevant here between all the sweepers they have. Yeah, sometimes you run well. I think we got incredibly unlucky the last round and feel like we got incredibly lucky this round. It's the name of the game. Let's see if the luck holds long enough to still match, though. Do I keep one land? Probably not. One land's better than this. Pretty sure my mulligans were good there. Uh, we did not stay lucky enough to win the match. That's right, I played a planes. I thought this was a Sky March Aspirant when I drew it. Huh. Oh wow. No fungal infection one time? The deck I played yesterday had four fungal infections main. It was a treat. If our opponent never plays a second land, we're probably a small favorite. If we draw a land, we no longer have to worry about fungal infection. The reinforcements is worth the same amount of damage as this, in a manner. But uh, this ends the game in four turns, so they would have to draw land, land, land in three of their next four turns to kill it. So I'd rather play that. Like the reinforcements adds four damage to the board, or sorry, six damage to the board. This only adds two. But we get the two from the reinforcements back later, and this provides an additional two on the following turn. All right, well, I bet our opponents is a tilted um, for losing that match as I was for losing round one. I need to charge my phone while we're here. I'm down to one viewer. I guess I was whining too much. I'm going to keep whining, though. That's the, that's the seriousest thing to do. The seriousest thing to do is going to whine all over you. The seriousest thing to do. I don't like these white weenie decks, and I especially don't really like this build. I like the build that we played the other day, that style of white weenie more. It's like... A little bit faster and Pride of Conquerors steals games that you have no business of winning. Other than that, they're like relatively similar. I just don't like a Danto, or I'm sorry, I don't like a, a Johnny in the main deck either. Like they're relatively similar, obviously. This can still games out of nowhere as well, but and it doesn't get crushed by sweepers as badly. But uh, I think this sounds fun. 
Ooh, our opponents own the white weenies as well. Alright, well, let's get a blocker down. We have no settled wreckage or anything in the sideboard now, so. It's a little disappointing. Wow, they kept a one lander. So, if they don't have Conclave, they have to make a decision on whether they want to throw away a creature to get a second land. Looks like the answer is probably yes. Can we get to make similar decisions on our turn? Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we could attack with the world, flip this, just cast this as a four four. Or we could just play heroic intervention two turns in a row. What if heroic intervention is two turns in a row is enough to win? I think it probably is. Like, he doesn't even have a good block this turn. We're attacking for, you know, like 17 damage or something. Hmm. Kind of surprised they didn't tap to Adanto. Wait, aren't they just dead now, then? So they block our biggest... They're gonna take a million. They take 16. It's effectively a million. What's good in these matches? Oops. Um, I feel like this card's probably good here. After that, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Maybe even the baffling ends. I know I don't want a Dantos. Like, that's the easiest thing to figure out. I uh, don't want a Dantos. I probably don't want Conclaves either. I don't really have a lot of things to take out for Conclaves in this build, though. Is the cat league good enough? It's like a one free blocker. Sh sure. Mainly because I think this card is just bad here.
really think a Johnny is very good either. I guess we have to keep. We have a history, which is a big game. We have uh, a couple of baffling ends, which are like medium nice. I wonder if I'm ever supposed to trade. I'm kind of playing the control route, so I think I would. I think I would offer him to trade too. No, that's probably just wrong. Offering to trade doesn't seem right. Because he could just ignore it, then next turn play two creatures and attack with a 2 2 and gain a life. Willing to trade when he attacks, but actually probably was right to attack that time. Block. Hmm. I'm going to offer him to trade. I'm not blocking anyway of anything but the hunted wampus, so. I might would block these. I might would like double block. Play around pride a little bit. In case it's pride. He was attacked with this too, I think, if he had pride, but whatever. Uh oh, scary that they're tapping four mana. Oh, well, that's not that scary. That means they're just casting Conclave. I could care less about a Conclave. That Conclave doesn't seem particularly good. I just kill two of these. I think I'm going to play this, though. What if I was supposed to gain a life? Well, that card's not going to do anything. Not now, friendo. Uh, so we're forcing chump blocks this turn. So if we're forcing chump blocks, there's no reason for him to be able to gain a life. So if I attack with them all, he has to block two or he's dead. He has to block these two or he's dead. Might as well put him at two. And 
Let's see what this experimental frenzy can do. Not enough. We win. Two one. Whew. Next round battle. Did we win the Dastro that match? Or are we 0 for 3 on Dastro's? Eh, it doesn't matter. We won this Dastro. This hand's odd. I think the double Odonto make it a keep, but obviously, like, the Snubhorns are kind of, uh, uh, not great looking where we're at. Ah, oh, that sucks. <laughs> that, that sucks, too. Wee. Positive note: We can cast them for three. Hmm. So I'll put the whole world on the ta on the table. Most things will turn our Dantos on next turn. Or, sorry, uh, turn our Snubbies on next turn. Not everything, but most things will. No, not another Wild Growth Walker. That's not fair. They always draw two of their best cards. You should probably attack. You never block it. They could actually easily block the Adonto. I'm just making a joke. Is that four drops were the only thing in the deck and not even all of those that doesn't turn on uh doesn't turn on these snubbies? That was really unlucky. What is there six draws in the entire deck that didn't turn on snubs there? Well, a lantern snubs on. So, okay, <laughs> they're they're done. <laughs> nice. I think I was just going to their face. I think I was crewing up two snubbies and attacking for, you know, a million, like seventeen. They have a lot of blockers, but I think that's what I was doing. Pretty sure that's what I was doing. I would have thought about it a second or two more, but I'm pretty sure that's what I was doing. Yeah, anyway, versus black green, like I was saying earlier, we have our eight special friends, which is nice. Um... It's even arguable to bring in the experimental frenzies because the games actually go really, really long. Cars that aren't wonderful here, conclaves aren't wonderful because they have like Vivians and Frashing Brontodons and stuff. It's also a reason that like experimental frenzies might not be great. But like you don't have to play a frenzy on four. You can play a frenzy on like six and get some value or whatever. Um, cards that we know we're cutting though, we know we're cutting the snubbies. Because they have golden demises and finalities and stuff. It's just not reasonable that we're going to get to that. I think I'm actually cutting, you know, like all the tribunals. Again, they don't really have anything I want to hit. After that, I'm not actually sure. It comes down to whether I want the frenzies or not. I think... Hmm... 
not a hundred percent sure I do. We knew they were playing Doom Whisperer, we would keep some tribunals. Thinking about just getting rid of the, the Johnnies. I think Experimental Frenzy will do a little bit more than a Johnny on average. Though a Johnny does buy back to Tecatli. Yeah, that could have been bad. Maybe we want to be able to buy back to Tecatli. Uh, we have none of our cyborg cards and i feel like we have to have a cyborg card to win this match all right i'm gonna keep it just because i'm not willing to go to five i feel like it's not the type of hand that can win our seven card was obviously better so i probably should have went to five i probably should have aggressively mulliganed to one of our cyborg cards should have aggressively cyb or mulliganed to a cyborg card i think Or I should have just kept the original seven and not worry about it. That could have just been a massive punt. Uh, actually, don't think the hunters are like actually. Eh. They survive golden demise and stuff and leave a friend behind. Sure. <laughs> All right. Screw the Johnnies. Tilt. Alright, that's a keep. Uh, I don't think that's good enough to keep. If you want to kill it, they should kill it now. I just want the guy in play. I don't care that, uh, that, like, this is a bit of a nombo. I just want the 4-4 four -four in play. I like the idea of having biggest creature on the table. I like the idea of playing the Danto too, but I'm not going to. I'm going to go ahead and get the Experimental Frenzy a turn before they can uh, Vivian read it. I kind of, kind of hope it goes wild. Kinda went wild. I would trade this for any two of their things, so... It will attack. They didn't even have four power, but... I would have traded it anyway. Alright, well we got by another fairly hard match. And we have locked up a pity chest. Can we do a little bit better? Who knows? Well, no one. Tenish minutes. I'd like to win a dash row here again. Because winning all the dash rows is fun with this deck. We did not win the dash row. Of course we didn't. I wanted it. Uh, I don't think I can mulligan this. Or I don't think I can keep this, rather. But how great would it be if I just had two lands and just ripped her off? A bonus for Rio. We could be ruining their day. All right, well, let's got all these uh, all these beautiful snubbies in in our hand. No, not another hard match. Wah, wah, wah. Oh, it's a slightly easier version of it at least. And they kept one land. 
but they hit. We kept two. Can we hit? I think I'm supposed to attack. You know they put a land on top? I don't know what that means from their deck really though. I think they put a land on top. Pretty sure I saw them put a land on top. That card's really these. Okay. Well, we get the party. I guess they didn't put a land on top and I'm just blind. I'm a blind witness, friends. Um, I'll play four life again, I guess. Getting things off the board is fine. <laughs> Heroic Intervention would be Dece 20. Not Dece plus, Dece 20. Probably shouldn't press F6. Just in case somehow they have an Adanto. I'm not really a familiar with our opponent's deck. I think I saw Nassif play it, but like I was like half in and half out of consciousness. So it was like during my bedtime. Or not not necessarily play their deck, but play a similar deck. Not 100% sure. I have to imagine if they're doing that, though, they're in rough shape. Like, like... I don't know if we can lose if they're doing that. Because, <laughs> I mean, they're going down to two here. Okay, they're not going down to two. But even if they had like a mass removal spell now, Snubby would survive, and so would the Danto, the Danto token. If they don't have a mass removal spell, at worst case scenario, we have two four or two uh, flyers that have four points of power. Um. So this says things don't trigger, which things not triggering is probably still good. I think they still play troops and things. I don't think they have the Wild Grove Walker package, so I'm not a hundred percent sure if I want this card. Hmm. Eh, YOLO. Let's just run it the same way we did last time. See if it works. Our opponent's 3 -0. What else did I take out last time? Did I take out a Danto? Danto... Feels off to me in the deck. Oh no, it's these Conclave Tribunals. I thought I, I, I literally thought I pulled them out already. Didn't I highlight them and try? I don't know. Let's give this a try. Alright, 
Uh, well, we have to keep. We have to Catley. To Catley, the friend maker. Making friends all the time. It's the Catley. Ay, ay, ay. Ooh, he's got the harpooners. Hi, my name is the Cat. What up, dog? What up, Holmes? Homie? Homie friend? Have a good draw. Um, no. Hmm. I said we have a good draw. Uh, let's take three. I don't really want him drawing to, and I want to attack with the world. We get to draw a lot of cards here. Pretty fine with that. They get a three block on this too, but they're taking an additional four. All right, well, I'm gonna pay four. They're literally taking four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We still have a heck of a threat out, or a heck of a force out. To Catley, pretty decent, friends. That didn't put him on six mana either, so it was a pretty safe attack. If it was going to put him to find finality mana, I'd probably never make that attack. And I'm not too worried about it, like, putting him to Golden Demise mana. Because if it put him to Golden Demise mana, he takes two damage from his own guys, and we still have this in play, and we still have this in play. So I wasn't worried about Golden Demise. It could have put him on Ritual Suit, but again, Ritual Suit kills these two. He takes two, and these two survive in that scenario. So, like, nothing but finality, sweeper-wise, saves him here. Now, I'm not saying that there's not, I'm not saying that 100% we win this game or anything. I'm just saying that I wasn't worried about him just drawing an arbitrary amount of cards. He's, he's stuck on four lands. He can't play all of those cards, and there's no one card that's super impactful, so I'm not even sure what he could have. Um, maybe a Necrotic Ooze for this. Uh, a Wild Growth Walker, a Merfolk Branch Walker puts him at nine, gives him four blockers. He can block one, two, three, four. So like, like it'll take it'll take some kind of sequence like that. I mean, I'm sure there's other sequences. I was just giving out an example. <laughs> yeah, well, we got the four one. Um, that's fine. It always just feels fine, but it feels like when, when I play White Weenie. I feel like every deck in the format is prepared for me. And when I, 
and, and that happens a lot. Though. So, like, say for example, you play Dredge and Vintage. Every deck in the format has a sideboard plan for the most part to beat Dredge. I won't say every deck in the format, but you know what I'm saying. I'm I'm, I'm using hyperbole, but like, like it's very, 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 very extreme. It's more common for people to have a sideboard plan versus Dredge than not have a sideboard plan versus Dredge. But the thing is, they have to jump through hoops to have those sideboard. They, they're playing cards that they wouldn't play otherwise. Whereas in Standard, when I play a White Weenie variant, like I run up versus Jeskai. Jeskai is going to be playing the Deafening Clarions and stuff anyway. They're not playing them because a White Weenie deck exists. Or I run up versus Golgari. Golgari's playing Wild Growth Walkers and Finalities and stuff like that already. Not because White Weenie exists, just because they're good cards. And that's why I don't like White Weenie. It feels like I'm running into hate, or not necessarily the words hate, but like cards that are very good versus me, that they already want to be playing because they're good versus black green, or good versus red deck wins, or good versus Drake, etc., etc. Like, White Weenie's obviously a powerful deck, and it's fast, but... It just always feels like you're clawing to get those wins because of what I just said. Um, I mean, obviously Daniel 8-0'd with it, so it was pretty good. And the PPTQ was won the week before that, and like the 8 in the top 8 of the PT, though I believe it actually had a pretty bad win record overall at the PT or whatever. And I said 8, but I think there were 6. So I'm just, I'm just spitballing here, but like... It just seems like everybody's prepared for you, and I, it feels like I have to run really hot. Like, I felt like I got lucky versus Black Green today. I felt like I got lucky versus that Demir deck. Like, I feel like those decks generally are favored versus you. I did feel like I got unlucky versus Drakes, but even if I beat Drakes and lose to the traditional Black Green and traditional Demir, I'm still only winning, you know, a chest. And we got paired versus, you know, quite a few rogue decks in this league but anyway that's gonna do it for us thank you all so much for coming by and as always i'll be back sometimes tuesday to keep the streak alive knock on wood and all of that but take care everybody and thank you for stopping by <laughs>